just waiting for everything to come on here. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm going to be trying something a little bit different here this morning. I'm going to start out this way with the prayer requests and just saying hi to everybody. And I'm going to be switching from here to over there, tripod. So we'll see how it works. Um, yeah, good morning, everybody, or afternoon or evening, wherever you're at. So. How's everything been going for everybody? Hopefully your week's been going good. Hopefully everybody's uh, not getting um, too weirded out by all the craziness that's going on. Yeah, it's going to be a judgmental study. Very judgmental. I mean, I can I can speak nice stuff and it still comes out. People think I'm judgmental. So, you know. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, so what I think what we'll do here is just kind of say, you know, just have a little bit of time of fellowship here in the beginning, like we did last week. And then when it's time for prayer requests, what I'd like to do is just say, OK, now just prayer requests. For a little bit of time that way um, i'm actually not i'm gonna try something different this week i'm gonna actually try to do uh actual just i'm just gonna read them off of the comments just go back up and then read them as i'm praying this morning is what we'll try to do see if that works so Good morning, everybody. And, uh, you know, now's the time. If you want to write in the comments over here, you can write where you're at, not your actual physical address. Don't give that stuff out online. But, you know, the, um, you know, uh, wherever you are in terms of, uh, you know, I'm in Patton, Maine where our office is right now. Anybody else in Patton, Maine, you know, kind of a thing. Um, and uh, it's a good way to, to, to meet up with other people. You say, hey, there's somebody from, you know, wherever. And uh, maybe we can meet up sometime and, and uh, have some personal fellowship and things, which is great. We like to do that. So. What time is it here? It is 10 o'clock a.m. So, yep. Gotta look up something here quick. Okay. Uh, all right. And I do see one area. I'll say this. Um, do you have your heat on? What kind of heating system do you have there? Um, no, we do not have any heat on right now um we uh we're trying to figure out what to do this year for this place and um so we're, we're praying about some different options there it's a little bit chilly in here right now so it's in the 20s you know about 24 degrees i think fahrenheit last night so pretty chilly but um Should be a, a good study this morning. Lord showed me some interesting things, so we'll see.
yeah my bookshelf you can see a lot bigger it's actually going to go around you know um see here i gotta it's going to go um back there here where the wall is it's going to continue going that way so i don't have enough room for my books this is probably not even half my actual collection of books um, i have a lot of books on other subjects so um yeah uh up here you can see this actually on the video right now these are letters i have to answer <laughs> so you know that's a pretty good stack of letters there as you can see just since the last time we did the answers to people's letters um I hear from a lot of people <laughs> and uh some of them I, I do write back through the mail um some i answer on video so um but anyhow okay i guess is everybody ready for the uh um prayer time i guess we can get that started if you can just kind of hold your comments for the time being so we can get just prayer requests um so yeah i know i it, you know i gotta post that sister chantre wrote this but brian legend says you're a hermit you can't get mail I, i'm just i just talk to a camera i don't i don't actually deal with real people <laughs> there we go <laughs> um yeah you know it's kind of weird but uh, okay um yeah let's just just go ahead and just take a break for a minute from the fellowshipping there in the comments and just prayer requests we'll start out here with uh um chad stewart we'll start with yours and then we'll go from there okay Okay, you want to just right now is the time to post your prayer requests. We can do some fellowshipping later. Um, pray for children in public schools. Yeah. Prayers for my father in law's health. Aaron Deeran. Prayer request I refuse to wear a COVID mask and refuse to obey the laws if the college kicked me out. I could get a sanction. Pray the Lord's will be done. Now. Okay, we're down to Christy S. Amen. Rich with wisdom. Steve, I agree. Um, Prayer request for guidance for family on where to move and to rely on God's provision. Okay. Pray against 5G rollout, yeah. Okay.
Okay. I'm going to start praying here, I think, and, and uh, if any of the others come up, get to those. on back up here um we'll try it this way uh, everything's just kind of experimental at this point in time so we're just going to try to do some different things here i guess um get it back up here all right okay let's uh bow our heads and, and go to the lord in in prayer Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you, Lord, for another chance to fellowship online with the brothers and sisters from around the world. I thank you for this great opportunity. And I just want to start out this morning, Lord, by praying for Chad Stewart for his severe severe head pain. I know a lot of people go through that. There's a bunch of others that have requested for the same thing. Um, we're under so much uh, assault down here with the electric pollution of all sorts, cell phone and, and everything else. And then there's also toxicity in the air and the food and so many things. Lord, I just pray you give him wisdom how to how to take care of that in a natural way and that you give him some healing on that. I pray for um, Zachary and Christ <clears throat> um, for discernment and choosing a wife according to God's will. Um, I know, Lord, that your word says that it's a it's a good thing to find a wife for, but it's very difficult right now for younger men. I pray for Stephanie Weaver, Lord. Um, as she's on the uh, oxygen there for the sickness that she has. I pray that you would please get her through that. Um, strengthen her through this time, Lord. Give her chances to witness to people um, that are helping her with that. I pray for Katrina Wadi, Lord, for salvation for her lost brother and sisters. Uh, a lot of that going around, Lord. I, family members that are lost, Lord, I pray that they would get saved. I pray, Lord, for... Um, uh, Darko KJV here, uh, that he finds a wife and for success for witnessing to a sodomite in Croatia. Um, help him to uh, open the mind of that sodomite there that they know and, or that he knows and give him a chance to witness to him. And I do pray for that. Um, uh, Piper LT, Lord, I pray that uh, those asking for prayer apply to the whole body of Christ. Um, and uh, the language barriers, Lord, I, we have to do this in English. I can't preach in a bunch of different languages, but I just pray, Lord, that you would open up the understanding of, of all of us, Lord, and help us to have that fellowship, that bond that exists only for those who are saved, that we would understand each other and lift each other up in prayer. Um, for Justine DeVoe, Lord, a prayer, Lord, for the public children in public schools. They're just being lied to so much, Lord. I do pray that you would show some of them the truth that their system is corrupt and get them out of there. I know many children are not wanting to go back to public school because of all the evil stuff that's going on right now, with this COVID thing. I do pray that you get more and more of them out of there. Uh, pray for prayer for Adam Moore's uh, father-in-law's health. I do pray that you would help him to, to heal. Um, for Aaron Deering, Lord, I, I pray that uh, you would just give him the strength to stand up for what he knows is right, and he would refuse the face mask thing, Lord, give him the words to speak and uh, give him a spirit of power, Lord, that he would be able to uh, convince the the evil people out there that are saying you have to wear a face mask, that he would be able to convince them that he, that he doesn't. And I just pray, Lord, for your leading there. Um, I pray, Lord, for uh, um, this uh, person here, Lord, that, that uh, they're going through some depression because of losing some pets that they had the cats there and i just pray that you'd get them through that time and that they would um just be comforted in that time i know cats can be very uh special friends lord and, and i just pray that you would please comfort them in this time of, of suffering um okay i already read that one i uh, pray lord for madison tamayo there that um just to, she's asking for prayer for the body of christ that we may stand strong in the lord and faithful um yeah lord i do pray for that um andrew walker that his dad would get saved lord give him a chance to witness open up his dad's heart um, to wanting to be saved for christy s yes, lord um again family that they would repent and be saved um for austin tabor lord that uh, the prayers that his salvation is right with god 
um, that he would get things sorted out there, Lord, and uh, you would clear up any confusion that he has about if he's saved or not. Um, that the Lord uh, would complete for G. Alex here that his chastisement and for sanctification begin and be perfected in him, Lord, uh, that, that he would grow in Christ. Um, pray for Jim W., Lord, uh, just as his faith is being tested. I pray that you would help him to think about the simple things, Lord, to return to the milk of your word and just realize that uh, the lies that are out there through evolution and atheism and all the other false religions and things, and that the truth is found only in your word, in the King James Bible, and that he would stand strong on those things, and those convictions. Um, Adam, Lord, is requesting prayer for brothers and sisters in Christ in California with all the fires that are going on out there and everything else. Um, a prayer, Lord, from uh, Brother Steve to... Uh, Request to be rich with wisdom, Lord. And I pray you give all of us wisdom because we need it. Not just understanding of your word, but wisdom how to live in these times. And, and just so much that we need, Lord. And you know that we pray for wisdom every day. So I pray all of us would have that uh, from you. Um, guidance on where to move, where their family should move. And to rely on God's provision. Do you pray for that for them? Um for the uh, people in the emergency services, Lord, that they would not be fooled by this coronavirus thing, but that they would um, do the things that make sense. Lord, I do pray for that. I pray for Roger Pinch, um, for his dad's salvation. Um, that uh, you would open the hearts of many of the lost relatives, Lord, and save them, help them to realize there's not much time left. Um, Uh, for Brother Philip, Lord, that the attacks of the enemy would not get him down. Um, it gets really, really frustrating sometimes when you're making videos and preaching from your word. Uh, the, the stuff that people can say, it's just like the devil's new, the right things to say to really hurt you inwardly and hurt you deeply. I've been through it for many years, Lord, and I, I just pray that you would strengthen Brother Philip as he puts out some messages from your word. Um, for uh, Sister Jill here, that... Um, for her sister-in-law's health and her severe migraines, Lord, again, give her wisdom how to heal those migraines. Um, prayer for co-workers that are very wicked and foul-mouthed um, that don't want to hear the gospel, Lord. Their, their hearts are hardened. Um, I do pray that you would soften those hearts uh, if it's your will. And if they have to get shook up some other way, then I pray for that. Um, for Brother Jacob Thompson's new book, um, and Lord, I do pray that you would help him with getting everything finished up and, and um, he'd be able to get it out there and really challenge the Trinitarian system. Um, prayer, Lord, that uh, we'd all approach your word today in sincerity, that we would all seek to uphold your word and not me as the final authority. Um, prayer for nephews, nieces and nephews, for many chains to be broken. Um, so much stuff, Lord, that, that uh, these young people are being caught up with nowadays with the video games and all the television and music and everything else, Lord. And uh, we pray against the 5G rollout, Lord, that, that you would withhold that and hinder that. Help us to know how to hinder it, Lord, and judge that wicked system to keep it away until we're caught up. Um, uh, for all the lost people, Lord, from every corner of the earth. Again, um, that many, we know many people will come to salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble. But right now, Lord, I pray that you would please give us all chances, open up doors of, of witnessing that we can witness to people wherever we're at. Um, uh, prayer for Linda Fry here for the pain that she's in. And um, just pray, Lord, that you would, that you would heal her. Of this this thing that she has here and just uh, give her comfort in that time um, prayer for protection and guidance I do pray for that Lord for all of us um, prayer that the uh, church that L James is going to um, that they would wake up to this COVID situation and uh, if they don't Lord I pray that that uh, they would leave and get out of there um, 
pray, Lord, for Ray Rojas's wife as she had surgery on Friday to relieve pain from an injury suffered 15 years ago. Lord, I do pray for that again. Another prayer for pain. Um, pray for this guy here that uh, he would overcome the world and not be tempted by the wickedness of the world. Um, a prayer, Lord, for continued discernment in regards to what we should be. All, we we all should be doing moving etc also for help with some personal struggles more victory over the flesh uh, again we can all kind of relate to that one um pray for god to continue to give wisdom in this time again lord another prayer for wisdom we need that so much um lord i pray uh for gg wallace's uh, husband daughter and son if they're not saved to give them chances to witness lord and um, prayer, Lord, that, that you would please save um, Martin's mother and the friend Joseph, Lord, praying for that. Um, another prayer, Lord, here for a friend who they've been witnessing to and reading with and seems to be really loving the word, word and being drawn. Lord, I pray you would continue to draw them. And uh, for Freya, I'll run Nari, um, for stomach problems, Lord, we do pray for that. And um, uh, prayer for the schools and people in them. The system is corrupted. We need help, Lord. Absolutely. I pray, actually, that you would shut down the schools because they're very wicked. And again, for Richard Winter, more prayer for lost family members, Lord, give them a chance to witness to them. Um, Uh, prayer for God to help with wisdom and to get the KJV Bible due to complications. Pray for that. Um, prayer for those whose lives have been destroyed by our wicked government, locking down. Again, that they would turn many of them to you for help. Um, prayer for those in Australia being oppressed, Lord. I know Australia is really getting bad over there. I do pray for that. Um, and uh, pray for this person here, Lord, that they're Parents are following the prosperity gospel. Um, and finally, Lord, one we'll with this one. Uh, and that is just, Lord, a, a prayer for the body of Christ to finish the race. The course that's been set before us, Lord, that we would all remain faithful up until the time you catch us up, no matter how long that has to be or how far away it is or soon or we don't know. And I just pray, Lord, that now that you would please speak through me in this study and uh, that you would help us all to follow along in your word. And um, thank you, Lord, again for this time, and thank you for your word and for salvation. And I pray it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do, look over this way. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to um, be studying the word now. So. Leave the comment thing go. Read your Bible, study in your Bible, turn in your Bible as we go through the scriptures. A lot of important things to say. Get your King James Bible out. And we're going to be going through the scriptures. Um, we have a bunch more uh, moderators now in the comment section. So, um, you know, if, if we see a lot of talk and whatever else, they're just going to delete comments and things and take care of that. So if you're a troll, don't bother coming in and posting, you know, problems and trouble and whatever else be respectful of what's going on here so um with that being said let me move my camera here sorry for the uh movement here I'll click this thing into place I get the at i got it hold on a second here I got my wire pinched. there we go Okay, I think we're ready. <laughs> I'm assuming that the sound is still good and everything. I guess everything still is working good. Could just maybe post a comment there. Just say everything looks good, sounds good. This first time doing this, I hope I didn't 
mess anything up. Does the sound good? Can everybody hear me? Okay, good. All right. Let me... Um, Minimize that one. All right. Seeing it there. Looks good. Okay. We're going to talk today about a call. A call to judgment. I had to arrange my heater down there on the floor. So take your King James Bible and you want to turn to Genesis chapter 18. So we're going to start out. Uh, a lot of people, I've seen this, this thing where people get mad at me, you know, the atheists and things out there and they'll say that I'm I just uh, go through the Bible and do word studies and that's somehow great preaching well what I'm trying to do just to clarify is um, I want the Word of God to speak for itself okay the authority is here so what I've done for many years is I do a word study and I'll see okay what is the first you know if I want to learn about judgment like today what is the first time judgment appears and then you look up all the references to judgment and it'll show you what God thinks, what what the subject judgment is throughout the Bible. Uh, lost people don't understand that. Lost people think that there should be some fancy exposition where you're quoting this book here and that book there. Well, they're Bibles, <laughs> but this book here and this book here and page such and such and these great orations. Um, that's not Bible believing preaching. Bible believing preaching relies on the book. OK. So that's why I do it this way. And that's a great way for you to study the Bible as well. And that is look up a word. What does the Bible say about perversion? What, about, what does the Bible say about uh, sin, about repentance, about belief, faith, grace? Name the word. But a lot of times the law of first mention, in other words, the very first time that a word is mentioned in the scriptures, it will oftentimes define it. As it goes throughout the Bible, not always, but usually it will. So let's start out here. Genesis chapter 18, verse 16. The Bible says, and the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Now, if you study this story here of uh, the Lord. Jesus Christ shows up in a pre-incarnate state there, shows up with two angels because he sends the two angels down to Sodom to judge it. And you can read about that. It goes into Genesis 19. But it's the Lord there with the two angels. And he's looking at Sodom and he's saying, I'm going to judge it. Uh, verse 18, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him. This is the key verse here. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. There's the first time it appears that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. I'll keep reading here and then we'll come back to that verse. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. So the Lord says, I'm going to go down to Sodom. And he sends two angels. The angels are going in there, you know, basically to give a report back to the Lord, which you see in Job chapter one. The angels have to come before the Lord to give an account of themselves. And even Satan has to come before the Lord and give account of himself. Pretty interesting. Verse 23, and Abraham drew near and said, wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? See, God says up there in verse 19, I know Abraham. He's interested in justice and judgment, you see, and it proves it down in verse 23. Abraham looks and he says, wait a second, lots down there. Um, are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? So he's looking about justice. He's looking about judgment. He's saying, yeah, I know about the sodomites down there. I know about the perverts down there, but lots down there. Are you going to destroy the righteous man with the wicked? See, he understands justice. He understands God's judgment. But what a challenge. 
Look at verse 19. I mean, I think we should all want this being said about us. For I know him. Does God know you? You know, there's a lot of things about there, this, this whole false salvation movement. I know Jesus. I believe in Jesus and things and whatever else. Okay, does, does God know you? Does Jesus know you? Hmm. That he will command his children and his household after him. Does the Lord know that you will take care of, of teaching your wife and your children if you're a man? After the ways of the Lord? Can the Lord count on you for passing on his standards of justice and judgment to your wife and children? And they shall keep the way of the Lord hmm. to do justice and judgment, not just believe in it, to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. The Lord made certain promises to Abraham. But those promises were not just, oh, hey, you know, um, hey, you, Abraham, uh, hey, I think I want to make of you a great nation because I just kind of picked your name out of a hat. No, the Lord knew Abraham. The Lord is watching every move that you make and that I make. Everything that we do. The Lord keeps track of things. He knows your thoughts. He knows my thoughts. Can he count on you to do justice and judgment? Psalm 7. Turn next to Psalm 7. Psalm 7. Verse 6 through 17. We'll read these verses. Arise, O Lord, in thine anger. Lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies, and awake for me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. Can we say that today? Yes, we can. There's a lot of things the Lord needs to judge right now. It isn't going to be, oh, when the, the catching up happens, boy, those these people are just, oh, I feel so sorry for them. The people that go into the time of Jacob's trouble, every single one of them deserve to go into that time. Don't ever forget that. Right now, salvation is so simple. Anybody can get saved, right? It's no problem getting saved. People who reject the Lord right now, they're going to go into that time period. They deserve it. They deserve to go in. God can save them. Absolutely. But salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be very difficult because it's going to cost you your life. And you're going to be public executions. People having their heads cut off. You read about that in Revelation chapter 20. Verse 7. So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about for their sakes. Therefore return thou on high. The Lord shall judge the people. And look at this. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. What did the Lord say about Abraham? I know him. Um, you know what a big part of God knowing you is? Judging. The Bible says over the New Testament, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. You know the standards of God's word, but yet when you disobey God's word, when you don't do judgment in your own life, God has to judge you. God has to punish you. Our prayer should be that God would judge us. Verse 9, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God trieth the hearts and reins. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Oh, God's, God's going to judge these wicked perverts out here, these sodomites, these filthy this and that. What about you? What about me? He judges the righteous, and it's a good thing. It's not, again, it's not a bad thing. Oh, God, such a meanie. Oh, I just can't believe he judged me this way. Judgment's a good thing, okay? But don't forget that God judges the wicked as well. Their time is coming. And he's angry with the wicked every day. So don't fall for this thing of, well, God loves you. God, God bless you and all this stuff. Saying that to wicked people that have rejected Jesus Christ. No. And here's an interesting picture for you. Look at verse 12. 
If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. Wet his sword. What does that mean? You take a whetstone, okay? You put some water on a stone, and you sharpen the edge of that sword. And you get that thing just as razor sharp. Wouldn't that be an image if, if uh, lost people could look up in heaven and look up there, and they see God up there, and he's sharpening his sword. And they look at his bow, and he's bending it. And he's drawn back on him like that. Big broad head there pointed right at him. Hmm. Verse 13. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Prepared for the lost the instruments of death. Yeah. He's angry with the wicked every day. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity, and hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it, and has fallen in, into the ditch which he made. Again, you know, all these wicked people out there, they're doing this whole coronavirus thing and, and whatever else. They're hurting themselves. You know, <laughs> put on your face mask, whatever. Okay, you're taking down your own oxygen levels, and you're, you're doing things against yourself. You're hurting yourself. You can do all the, you know, we're going to do bailouts and things. And we're going to have all this banker bailout stuff coming in, you know, and, and filling up our own, you know, coffers, our own bank account. Uh, okay, but you're causing your own destruction in the future. You can't keep printing money and bailing yourself out. That's not good. They're going to fall in their own ditch, in other words. It's interesting because Jesus in the New Testament says about, you know, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch. Hmm, little tie in there. Verse 16, his mischief shall return upon his own head and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord most high. One of my favorite portions of scripture is in Revelation chapter 19, where in the early part of it, the saints are up there in heaven cheering when they see the destruction of Mystery Babylon. We're going to praise his name when we see the destruction of the Catholic Church. And I can't wait for that day. It's going to be a good time. Next, go to Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. See some more things here about judgment. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. It's all in the prayer request this morning. We should all pray for wisdom and understanding, especially in these times. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest, liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou searchest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasure, treasures, then shalt thou understand the knowledge of the Lord and find the that then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, excuse me, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Judgment is a good thing. We'll talk about this as we continue. It's not a bad thing to judge things. So many people have this idea, you know, hey, you're judging me in my sin. Well, yes, because I'm trying to help you get away from that sin. Judgment's a good thing. And the more understanding, the more knowledge the Lord gives you over time, that's the process of sanctification, the more you're going to say, hey, you know what? This is wrong. I can't have this in my home, and I shouldn't be eating that, and I shouldn't listen to this, and I shouldn't wear that, and I shouldn't. That's the whole point of the Christian life. Proverbs chapter 17. I'll show you an interesting verse here. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 23 in your King James Bible says, A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. I literally heard this morning about the fact that Farmer or farms here in America, many of which are owned by China, communist China, and bought farms here in this country. Real nice thought. 
but they just got a bailout for the third time. I don't know what the other two were, but this third bailout is $14 billion, billion with a B. While most Americans are suffering and not able to pay, you know, things for things and whatever else, the farmers, many of which are Chinese owned, are getting or $14 billion. Why? Because they have uh, inside connections. But look at that. Look at how it says it here. A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom. Almost like uh, you see the. Uh, see if I can do this. See the guys taking the, the picture like this. The Masonic, you know, hidden hand gesture. I thought that was rather interesting. They take a gift out of the, the bosom, you know, little secret handshakes and things, little insider deals and whatever else. And uh, yeah, destroy all these people in the area here and uh, make sure my corporation gets a little bit more bailout money. You know, yeah, these people are going to lose their homes and, and uh, but to bail out the bank here so that we don't close down. And then uh, we'll take that money that we have and we'll go out there and we'll buy the people's homes when they can't afford to make their mortgage payments anymore. Coming soon <laughs> to a town near you. Proverbs chapter 19. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 28 through 29. Says here, an, ungodless, an ungodly witness scorneth judgment, and the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. Judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the back of fools. Yeah, but I find that interesting. An ungodly witness scorneth judgment. Um, a lot of people out there in the quote unquote truth or movement, as I've been ripping on for a while now, um, they'll come out and they will talk about things of truth, certain aspects of truth and whatever else. But they scorn judgment. They don't want to hear about, well, you know, God's going to judge this nation. God's going to judge you personally. God's going to judge me. Oh, no. Let's just all set aside our differences and all come together and, and be one or something. Uh, no, it's not supposed to do that. Why are they like that? These truther people, these new age truther types, because they're ungodly witnesses. That's why they scorn judgment. But judgment is the best thing that you can have to hit a nation. I'm going to be making some points at the end of the study to tie this whole thing together. You'll see what I mean. Go over to Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21, beginning in verse 1. And here's something to remember. Okay. You get stressed out about what all is going on. This is a good thing to remember. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. Compared to Romans chapter 13. God ordains rulers and he controls them. Why are bad things happening in America and in most other countries? Because the people are bad. So God brings in a bad ruler to punish the people. You see, people need to turn back to righteousness, turn to Jesus Christ, repent of sin. Verse 2, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Remember, Abraham, I know him. The Lord knows everybody. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Huh. You know, you go to these modern churches and it's all about, you know, um, sacrificing your time and coming here and being part of the community. And let's all get together and have, you know, food banks and clothing banks and all this other. What about justice and judgment? Well, I don't want to do that because that would turn people away. Well, the Lord would rather have justice and judgment than, than uh, sacrifices, nice things that you're doing for people. Verse 4, and high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. Very true for today with the big ag type practices and GMO and all the other stuff. thought that was an interesting thing. But a high look. How many people out there have this high look thing? You know, a proud heart. Pride is never a good thing. In the Bible, pride is always condemned 100% of the time. Um, verse 5, the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but of every one that is hasty only to want. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro from them of them that seek death. Isn't it interesting that you study some of this stuff and about what rich people are doing? A lot of them are building underground facilities. 
and they're having to steal all kinds of money from people and give us bailouts and triple P or whatever the loan things is all this money coming in. They're lying to get money. Why? Because it's going to lead to their untimely death. Revelation chapter six, they're crawling. They're, they're getting into the rocks and caves of the mountains and calling on them and saying, fall on us to hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. They're scared of God. What a bunch of stupid fools, but they're so heavily invested in the game that they're playing that they can't come before the Lord as a broken sinner. See, again, another proof that salvation is more than just this mental assent to some facts in the God or in, in the Bible here. I believe, therefore, I am saved. You know, this new age gospel that's out there. Um, if it's just a belief and, and you're saved and, and that's all there is to it and, and your life doesn't change or whatever else, you don't have to come to the Lord broken. Anybody could be saved. You just simply say, yeah, I believe Jesus died on the cross. Okay, back to the the wickedness that I've been doing. Uh, no, when you get saved, when the Lord saves you, I should say, um, he changes your life. And if you don't submit to him, he will chasten you. Period. It's the way it works. Um, verse 7, the robbery of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. You see, if, if the lost world out there that's stealing people's money and doing this whole, all the scheming that's going on right now, um, if they did judgment, then they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. They would understand, hey, we're going to be in trouble with the Lord destroying people financially. See, they wouldn't do that. Jump down to uh, verse 12 of the same chapter, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 12. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked, but God overthroweth the wickedness or the, the wicked for their wickedness. You can look at Bill Gates. You can look at some of these people and just look at them and say, why would you want some stupid big giant house like that? That's weird. You know, Elon Musk and, and all these big multi-billionaires, Donald Trump, 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 you know, with his big uh, mansion that's that's patterned after the, some palace or something, Louis, the whatever, you know, whatever it is. I've seen some of the stuff. It's all gold plated this and that. Why? Why? Stupid. It's absolutely stupid. But what's their end? God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. God is angry with the wicked every day. All these Jesuits and high-ranking people and Illuminati and Freemasons and Knights of the Equestrian Order, Knights of Malta, Knights of, name them, Knights of Columbus or whoever, God's going to overthrow them. Right now, oh, they're, they're just, you know, basking in the sunlight of, oh, we're bringing in our new world order and we're persecuting people, whatever else. It's a few years and they're done. What a waste. Verse 13, whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself but shall not be heard. A gift in secret pacifieth anger and a reward in the bosom strong wrath. It is joy to the just to do judgment. But destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You're going to a church building yet yeah, and they're doing the whole coronavirus thing and everything else. You know, social distancing and masks and scanning the forehead. There's a good one. Um, you're in the congregation of the dead. You need to get out of it. Verse 17, he that loveth pleasure shall not, shall be a poor man. And he that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. I, it, it boggles my mind to see what's going on in America right now, to see God is judging America. God is destroying this nation, plain and simple. And, and what are people doing? I think I should get a new uh, ATV or UTV or Oh, well, I don't want to get a new flat screen TV. Maybe I should buy a new bass boat or a new car or a truck or, or whatever else. Let's, you know, they don't really go on vacation because all stuff it's locked down or whatever. They're loving pleasure. What's the Bible say about the end times? Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God? Hmm. You know, if if people wanted to get right with God, they should be hitting the ground right now. Get down on your knees and cry out to God and say, God, forgive us for our wickedness. Forgive this wicked nation. They're not doing it. Well, then what's left? God, judge this nation. I pray for God's judgment to hit this country and all the others out there as well. That's what we need to start thinking about. We need a call to 
judgment. Why? Well, it says there in verse 15, it is joy to the just to do judgment. It's a joy. You know, you come out, you make videos, or you, you put out gospel tracts or whatever else, you're doing judgment. Well, I didn't get any people saved. Okay, but you're doing judgment. All right. See, here's the, here's the beauty of, of witnessing as a Christian. Every time you witness, you win. Period. Why? Because you just judge that person. It should be a joy to you to do judgment. You see? You can't fail when you're when you're witnessing to somebody. You see, but they don't get saved. You still do judgment. See, judge the judge that sits in the courtroom, he doesn't just sit there and say, guilty, guilty, you know, there's gavel and stuff. Bam, guilty, bam, guilty. Guilty. Innocent. He's there to judge. That should be our role as members of the body of Christ. We should be there to pass judgment. And it should be a joy to us. Hey, that movie is wicked. That's terrible. Hey, what do you think about uh, eating this food or this herbal tea? Or something? Hey, that's great. I think that's wonderful. And you see people and it helps them. I've literally had atheists contact me and say, you know what? I don't agree with what you say, but I'm sure thankful I saw your video on natural health cures for headaches. You've helped me. And you've given me some things to think about. Judgment. Put out truth and the judgment will happen. Saved or lost. Innocent or guilty. It's a joy to do judgment. But when you get all this little milk toasty modern Christianity type of a thing and all these people out there. Um, well, I don't agree with this, but at the same time I do. And, and I, you know, I don't I. I don't, I'm not for the COVID vaccine, but I think some vaccines are okay. Uh, you know, no, they're all bad. They're all based on false science. Vaccination across the board is bad. I mean, be doing more about this in the future, but just go to the CDC's website, look up the vaccine excipient summary, and they give you the ingredients of what's in these vaccines. They're all toxic. It's all toxic. Poison. It's not, well, I, I'm not, while I wouldn't be for the coronavirus vaccine, I am for the others because there's some that are okay. They're all bad. They're all bad. Show me where anybody injected, you know, poison and disease into their body to keep from getting the disease. It's false science. It's an opposition of science falsely so-called. More on that in the future. But uh, we need to stand against things and not be wishy-washy. Okay, you don't, maybe you don't have to be as sarcastic as me or whatever, but you know what? You need to come out and have a firm stand. Why? Because we're called to judgment. So we're supposed to do. We have a standard by which we can judge things. If it's just, hey, it's just my opinion, well, then my opinion is as good as your opinion. But we're talking about the written words of the living God right here, his instruction manual. I mean, somebody comes along and they say, hey, you didn't do this thing right on your, on your vehicle outside. Uh, well, I get out the, what am I going to do? Get out the owner's manual and say, well, actually right here, it says I'm supposed to do it that way. That's the standard. This is our owner's manual right here. But let's continue. Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 4. The king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. I love that one. Uh, old Donald Trump, Trump 2020. Look what Trump has done. You know, make America great again. You know, I mean, the the I wrote a bunch of things down here on the back. I'll get to this. Uh, make a make America great again. MAGA. OK, um, wrong. Uh, he hasn't made America great again and he won't do it another four years. It's not going to happen. All right. Uh, and if he did make America great again, if you're a Christian, and you stand for that statement. Um, what would happen? Would people turn from sin? Let's just put off judgment. Let's make America great again. Let's not judge America. Let's not get God's judgment to come down to America. Let's just make it great again. Why? People will continue in sin. Another one of the Trump slogans, you know, keep America great. I've seen this one. Um, America is not great. America is, you know, one of the worst. Uh, nations out there as far as debt is concerned the dollar is a joke everything's falling apart keep america great america's not great okay another lie and then they say 
no more. I've seen these sign, you know, the flags flying, no more. And then the words BS, I won't say the profanity there. Um, okay. Uh, why is he put up with it right now? Because the verse says there, the king by judgment establisheth the land. You know, if he was a real leader, if he really had the powers of a president and not being controlled by all the interests behind the office of president, Trump's an actor, okay, a Jesuit trained actor. But if he had true power, if he was a real man, the riots would have never happened. What are those people doing? Hey, stop that. No, let's just have the police stand down. The police stand in there, you know, watching buildings being burned, watching police cars being burned. And actually, they're not police cars that are being burned. They're taxpayer cars that are being burned. All right. That's the sick part about it. Oh, look at the police force lost all this. No, no. The people of the city there lost those cars. They're the ones paying for it. But, you know, a real king stand up and just simply say, stop that. We're going to put an end to that thing. But what's going on with Trump? But he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. Trump receives gifts. Guaranteed. He's in the back pocket of Big Pharma. Let's roll out these vaccines. Let's operation warp speed. Let's get this stuff out there. Let's get these, these vaccines going fast. Let's get them before the election time. What's the rush? Oh, uh, probably because there's a lot of money in it. That's the whole thing. Jump down to verse 8. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 8. Scornful men bring a city into a snare. Not here in America. Though. That's, the Bible is so outdated, you know. It's just... But wise men turn away wrath. They judge. If a wise man, man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. Hello, YouTube comments. How many times have we, all of us, have done it? You contend with a foolish man, and whether he's rages, whether he's angry, or, ret or laugh, the guy's being friendly and whatever, so to speak, there's no rest. You're dealing with a fool. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Don't contend with them. Don't waste your time. Verse 10, the, bl the bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in until, until afterwards. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. Uh, hello again, <laughs> you know, America in the 21st century. Trump is hearkening to lies. And what's happening as a result, all of his servants are wicked. It's right there. And you say, what do you, what do you do then for the election? You ignore it. You say, I'm going to clean up my life. I'm going to have righteous standards in my life. The presidential election thing is just, it's a scam, but you increase righteousness and you start to judge wickedness and evil. And you say, you're not bringing that into my town. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do this in my house. you get, get off my porch, get off of my land. We're going to do right. Hey, go to the grocery store. I don't appreciate the fact that you're putting this stuff out here on the shelf and whatever. I mean, I literally knew a street preacher that went into a Walmart, some state, and they had pornography in the magazine racks, you know, all the porn magazines and everything else. And he took a shopping cart, went right over, and he took all that stuff, stuck it in the shopping cart, and he went right over to the customer service thing. And he said, he said, this stuff is in plain view of my children and other people's children. I don't want this trash on the shelves over here. And he made a big stink. They called the police and everything on the guy. And uh, James Lyman is his name. And, um, you know, he made, a, he made a problem there. Judgment, you see. We can all do something to judge the wicked, to judge the lost. That's how you bring a nation back, to make standards of judgment. Not to say, we'll just elect the right leader and he'll fix up our problems for us. No, it's not going to happen. When you see that your elections are being controlled, and they very much are in America and in most other countries, you can't rely on the leader. It's about the church of Jesus Christ, the church of the living God. But we'll continue here. Proverbs chapter 29, where do we stop? Uh, 
um, verse 13, the poor and the deceitful man meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. Again, you see an example of positive judgment there. A king, a ruler should judge the poor. He should look and say, hey, this isn't right. Shutting down the economy, this is bad for the poor people out there. This is going to hurt a lot of people. This is going to kill a lot of people. Hey, stop the lockdown stuff. This is insane. This isn't medical procedure. You don't lock down healthy people. You, you quarantine the sick. You know, that's what you do. And it's not even that big of a sickness. This coronavirus thing is a scam. You know, 96 people, percent of the people recover from it. It's basically a cold or maybe the flu at worst. You don't need to lock down the nation. You don't need to be taking people off and hauling people away and taking people's rights away and everything else. It's a crime what the government is doing. That's why you don't submit yourself to them when they're doing this criminal activity. But um, let's go to uh, verse 23. Jump down to verse 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Whoso is partner with a thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing and bereath it not. What do you do when you hear cursing out in public? You should be read. You should say, hey, excuse me. There are women and children present. Watch your language. Judgment, you see. We all need to call to judgment. But we just get so so little mousy and you know, little church mice, you know, that we're just so nice and we're so quiet and I don't want to judge anybody. I don't want to I don't want to ruffle any feathers. I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable. And you know one of the big reasons why? Because so many Christians have debt. So many Christians have these things that they have to pay. Oh, I have to make my payments. So I have to, I have to have my job. I can't lose my job. I have to do this and I have to do that. And I, what would happen to me if I judged somebody? God can't take care of you. Verse 25, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. You might want to kind of write that one out, print it out, put it someplace so you can remember it. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Hmm. Do you seek the ruler's favor? Let's get Trump elected so he can make America great again. He can keep America great. He'll do good things. Because he said he'll do think good things, and you can always trust the words of a politician. Uh, no, um, many seek the ruler's favor. Forget those many, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Our judgment should come from the Lord. The Lord should be able to look down from heaven and see every one of us and say, "I know him. I know Brian. Brian will do the right thing." If I show him truth, if I give him wisdom, if I give him understanding, I know that I can trust him to come out with it and preach it. That's been what I've tried to do in ministry. I've messed up. I've made mistakes. But I've always tried to do justice and judgment with this standard right here. Verse 27, an unjust man is abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. You're not going to get along with everybody. Well, I just, you know... Okay, I'll do judgment, but as long as I can get along with my coworkers, as long as my boss doesn't get mad and fire me, I, I, I'm ready to do some justice and some judgment here, but just so long as I don't offend people, it doesn't work that way. The unjust man is abomination to the just. We can't get along with the unjust. And he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. I am an abomination to the people of this town, primarily. Um. There's people in this town that are very, very wicked. And, you know, I live in the middle of nowhere in northern Maine. I mean, if I lived in the city, the people would be probably showing up outside with torches and pitchforks or something, you know, wanting to lynch me. But uh, I'm an abomination to a lot of people. Why? Because they're wicked. And what am I? Upright in the way. I'm not sinlessly perfect. But... Uh, there's a lot of things the Lord's helped me to clean up in my life, and I'm going to tell people about it. Why? Because I'm going to judge them. Because I want people to get right with God. That's why. 
Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Verse 14 through 16. The Bible says, Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. So, uh, Mother Earth, Mother Earth. Uh, well, there, there's a good verse for Mother Earth. And by the way, um, hell is down there in the heart of the earth, and the earth is opening her mouth. We worship Mother Earth. Well, if you don't worship Jesus Christ, then Mother Earth is going to swallow you up and burn you forever. That's so judgmental. Exactly. Verse 15. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. The Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment. The time of Jacob's trouble is all about that exact thing right there. The Lord is going to be exalted in judgment. All these people, there is no God. The evolution has been proven true. The Bible's a book of lies. And they, oh, they're talking big right now. They're talking real big. But you know what? The time of Jacob's trouble was coming. And God is going to show his wrath that he is angry with the wicked every day. He's going to just pour out his judgment and his fury for seven years. Not 40 days and 40 nights like the flood in the days of Noah. Seven years years but here's the interesting thing you say oh that's just oh i don't know if i could believe in that that's so cruel seven years of god's judgment and wrath and the blood the seed being turned into the blood of a dead man and and a third of the people dying and a third of the trees being burned up and all green grass being burned up and all these things you read about in the book of revelation what's well, so cruel no actually it's god's judgment and you know what Revelation chapter 7 says that there's a great multitude which no man could number that gets saved in that time period. You mean to tell me that salvation could actually come as a result of judgment? You see, right now our minds are our carnal mind, the Laodicean type of mind in the book of Revelation. They're neither hot nor cold. They're lukewarm. They make God sick. That struggle is there with all of us. We just want to get along with people. I mean, it's it's there. Nobody likes to be kicked around and made fun of and humiliated and spat on and whatever else and, and mocked. and Nobody likes that. But you know what? It's actually the reverse of the way it is in our minds. Our carnal mind says, if I just kind of take it easy and I'm a nice guy, maybe people will like me. Maybe people will get saved if I'm nice to them. No, actually, oftentimes it's the opposite that's true. If we were more strong in our stands and we were more judgmental, then people would say, hey, you know what? These Christians are different. These people over here, they're different than me. They're different than the Methodist church down the road. They're different than the Baptist church down the road. They're certainly different than the Catholic church. Boy, these people, there's something unique about this King James Bible believing group of people. They're judgmental. They're harsh. Boy, you know, hmm. That's the way it should be. And when God finally starts to pour out his judgment on this world, a great multitude gets saved. God forgive us for not being as judgmental as we should be. For keeping our mouths shut many times when we should have spoken up. When we should have said, hey, excuse me, that's wrong. That's wicked. Double-edged sword, brethren. Cuts, doesn't it? Micah, the book of Micah. Go towards the New Testament. You have the minor prophets that come after the book of Daniel. Essentially, I guess, maybe you could say that Daniel's a minor prophet. But Micah, I'm not sure if, if Daniel falls into the minor prophets or not. But uh, Micah chapter 3.
And this is what's coming to America. Micah chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. And I said, Here I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? The king, the people in authority, aren't you supposed to be judging things? Who hate the good and love the evil, who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones. That's what evil people do. That's what when, when you don't stand against the wickedness in a country, they eventually start to hate the evil, excuse me, hate the good and love the evil. Exactly what's going on. You get some guy and he has a King James Bible like this and he walks up to the president and he says, hey, you know what? I don't agree with the fact that you've fornicated with so many different women. And I don't agree with the fact that your Bible says love of the money is the root of all evil. And you get some transgendered pervert that comes up and says, oh, hello, Donald. My name's, you know, oh. Uh, Pick some woman's name, Teresa or something, you know, no offense to anybody out there with the name Teresa, <laughs> but you know, I'm Teresa, you know, and he's, oh, thank you. Come on in and you sit at my table to dine and you, you radical, stupid preacher, get out of here. And yet I'm the one that will turn people from wickedness. I literally talked to a retired police officer the one time we were moving up here to, to Maine and he said, it's a shame you're moving to Maine. He said, because we need preachers like you. Men that turn people from wickedness. That's a smart police officer. Police should never come out and persecute somebody like me. Because I want to turn people away from drinking, away from drugs, away from fighting, away from whatever. See? But yet when the, the country gets so wicked, when there's judgment that's been forsaken, all of a sudden the politicians, the police, the military, whoever else, they start to actually exalt the evil, and reject those that are good. Verse 3, Micah chapter 3, verse 3, Who also eat the flesh of my people, and flay their skin from off them, and they break their bones, and chop them in pieces, as for the pot, and as flesh within the cauldron. Goes on, uh, Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. Oh, we're going to, you know, God bless America and stuff. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Blasphemy in scripture is when you say, you know, you use the Lord's name in vain or you use, you say something nasty about God himself. Well, I believe personally that saying God bless America right now is a form of blasphemy or whatever other country you're in out there. God bless America. Why? For the sin? Uh, if God blessed this country, he would be a very foolish, very hypocritical God. God can't bless a nation that turns so, so viciously against his word. He can't do it. Don't ever say, God bless America. Don't ever say, God bless this country when they're doing sin and when they're doing wrong. God will not bless a nation like that. Verse 5, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry, Peace! And he that putteth not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. Again, so true of today. The churches, the, the ones out there, Joel Osteen, especially in his ilk and, and things, and all these modern prosperity preachers, they're not doing any kind of judgment. It's all peace, and we have times of peace. God has a special plan for you today. God just wants to prosper you and do so much good things for you. They're lying. They're after the people's money. Verse 6. Therefore, might, not, excuse me, therefore night shall be unto you, that ye shall not have a vision, and it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not divine, and the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed and the diviners confounded. Yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Sounds judgmental. The false ones, the false priests and prophets and things are saying, Prosperity! It's getting better! Make America great again! God bless America! And the, the real ones are saying, 
you're wicked you're sinful you have a church building there's no scripture for that you're using new versions that come from the vatican how dare you you're listening to contemporary christian rock music how dare you you woman need to put on a dress look at that short skirt you look like a prostitute you declare their sin Verse 9, hear this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel, that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads there, thereof judge for reward and the priests thereof teach for hire. And the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they, learn, will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. <laughs> Gotta love that. Therefore shall Zion for your sake be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountain of the house as the high places of the forest. Now we're just going to be wrecked. It's going to be ruined. You see these cities where the people have gone through the Black Lives Matter and Antifa and everything else. They go through, and it's just a rubble after all the fires are done and after all the destruction, burned out vehicles, flipped over vehicles, smashed windows stolen things from the stores but it doesn't end there what about the fires out in california oregon out west there what about the flooding down south what about all these different things god is pouring out his judgment on this nation you say what about saved people here's the thing here's why there is no new no uh, church building in the new testament because the body of christ is supposed to be flexible you see it in the book of Acts. Paul persecutes the church at Jerusalem. And so what do they do? They stand their ground and they get constitutional rights and they write to their congressman and they scatter. If you're saved and you're out there, out west someplace, and the fires come in and it burns your house down, look at it as, okay, what's the, you know, they would say the silver lining. I'd prefer to say what's the, the will of God in that situation. Well, are my neighbors wicked? Yes. Does God maybe want me to move to some new area? Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I remember having a dream many years ago. It was one of the most convicting things I ever dreamed. And um, I had this dream that I, I was out in the woods hiking around and whatever else is before I knew my wife. And... Um, I came back down and, and there were soldiers that were taking things out of out of my home. And, and um, all I had with me was my Bible. And at the time in the dream, I actually felt peace. And I thought, well, at least I didn't get my Bible. At least I escaped with this. And now I don't have all that stuff to think about. It's all gone. And, uh, you know, it's what you have to look at as a Christian. What if you lose everything because you stand for truth, because you stand for judgment? What if you lose it all? Could you have peace in that time period? Hmm. You can have peace because you understand that it's God's judgment coming on a nation. Hey, uh, um, you're going to lose your job because you took the right stands, because you judged people for their sins. Okay, God has something else for me. And I pray that the Lord judges that wicked company that I was working for that persecuted me as a Christian because... I took stands that were, you know, not with company policy. YouTube shuts this channel down. What would happen to YouTube? Well, it would appear that they would go on and everything else. But I'll tell you right now, um, God's judgment would come. God's judgment would come on people uh, out there that are that are persecuting this ministry and, and everything else. We do right if we are the ones that stand for truth and stand for justice. Whatever happens in your life, it'll all work together for good. Romans 8, 28, one of my favorite verses, one of my life verses. Uh, you need to think of it that way. God can judge America. God can judge England, can judge Canada, can judge whatever country you're in. God can judge that nation, and you can still come out better off for it because you can say, thank you, Lord, for judging this nation. But that's only if you believe in the judgment of God. First Peter chapter four.
First Peter chapter four, verse 12 through 19. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as so, though some strange thing happened unto you. Really applicable to people out west having homes and properties burned. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Again, remember that. Very important scriptures to go through there. Understand that when suffering comes, when persecution comes, because you're doing right, not because you you did wrong or whatever else. Oh, the police are here persecuting me. Why? Well, I went, you know, 90 miles an hour and I robbed a bank. They're persecuting me. No, you're doing wrong. And they're there for a good reason. But if the police come and they are there to forcibly vaccinate, if they're there to bust up your family or whatever else, okay, Lord, what do I do in this situation? I'm not going to submit to what these guys are telling me to do. I'm not going to submit to this. All right. It's a good thing. Judgment is coming. Verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. How do we go forward with the future right now? For many of us, the future is extremely uncertain. Um, we don't know where it's going to go. We don't know. Is it going to be forced vaccination? Is it going to be more lockdowns? Is, are, we, are we going to lose homes? Are we going to lose jobs? Are we going to lose our lives? We don't know. None of us know. But what do we do? Commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. We judge things. And we do well. Righteousness needs to start here. As my other sermon I did in this series of studies, you know, a call to righteousness. We need to be right with God. That comes first and foremost. You don't, well, I need to be right with my fellow man. No, you need to be right with God. And you need to be judgmental and say, that's wrong. This is wrong. That's good. Judgment work, works both ways. See? But um, when the judgment hits this nation, where is it going to start? According to that scripture right there, verse 17, the house of God. That doesn't mean a church building, by the way. That's the body of Christ. You have to think about that. John chapter 16. Go to John chapter 16. Two more places to turn to here. John chapter 16. Verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the Prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Christians should be all about looking for things to come, especially the Lord Jesus Christ, our blessed hope. That should be there. But we should be trying to warn the wicked of God's judgment that's coming. This is ju God's judgment that's happening to these, this world right now. All the evil and everything else, God's judging the lost world. But you see, verse 13 there is one of the greatest proofs for if somebody's really genuinely saved. All right. Look at it again. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, do you have the spirit of truth within you? The Holy Spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. 
for he shall not speak of himself this holy spirit thing and oh come holy spirit all this charismatic stuff the gifts of the holy spirit and everything else uh that isn't it um the holy spirit when he comes into somebody he will glorify jesus christ he'll have them talking about jesus all the time but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come the greatest test to see if somebody is genuinely born again is to see what is their love for the truth are they willing to accept the truth because truth is judgmental hey this is the truth here the king james bible is god's perfect word what's that mean the others are not period well that's so judgmental exactly are you going to stand for the king james bible um you need to have a personal relationship with jesus christ where your life changes after you get saved what's the catholic church have they don't have that they have no assurance of salvation well that's judgmental again my point go down through the list this nation is wicked a man and a man together and a woman and a woman together is abomination according to the word of god it's wrong it's bad it's part of an agenda there a satanic agenda to people for people to sterilize themselves and you look at all these different movements the feminist movement sterilize yourself the men going their own way the MGTOW movement sterilize yourself you get down through the whole thing that's what they're doing trying to kill you off this whole coronavirus thing is to destroy the economy to destroy the middle class you study it out you look at it that's what it is it's all destruction but you see for me to say that I have to judge people that's the point if God gives you truth he expects you to do to do justice and judgment hopefully God knows you for that finally let's go to Matthew chapter 7 because I'm sure if there's any false professing Christians watching this they've already gone this in their mind judge not that ye be not judged you know that's what you're gonna get as soon as you say well, I need to judge you or whatever the Bible judges you well you know the Bible says judge not you know whatever let's look at the scriptures Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 through 6 judge yet judge not that ye be not judged well then you're not allowed to judge right keep reading for with what judgment ye judge ye shall be judged and with what measure ye need it shall be measured to you again and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye or how wilt thou say to thy brother let me pull out the mote out of thine own eye or out of thine eye and behold a beam is in thine own eye thou hypocrite first cast out the beam out of thine own eye and then shalt thou clearly uh, see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye so what it's talking about there is hypocritical judgment hey you know if i got some kind of secret porn addiction which i don't i have victory over that for many years now but uh, and i'm just up here railing on people you pervert you wicked disgusting foul creature you that looks at pornography how dare you and i'm looking on it on my own computer well that's a problem i'm a hypocrite but see, I can judge you for pornography addiction. Why? Because I took the beam out of my own eye. So now I can look at your moat in your eye and say, hey, let me help you out with that. Well, you know, I guess maybe it's not a big deal. Oh, it's a very big deal. You're out of fellowship with God if you're saved. If you're lost, well, you're just earning your damnation all the more by looking at pornography. Let me help you out with that. If you're lost, you need to get saved. And then I'll tell you how to get away from the pornography addiction. If you're saved and you have it, I can help you. I can tell you what to do to get away from pornography addiction, to get victory over that sin. Then you get down through the list, whatever it is. Again, the life of sanctification has to be there where we judge ourselves. You say, God, judge the lost world, but judge me. Tell me where I'm wrong. Show me the things that I need to get out of my life. I want to be safe. I want your protection. I want your power. You know, one of the things I pray on a regular basis is put your fear upon the heathen round about me. I want God's fear to be upon the heathen. And I've seen that thing. There's there's people that are that just, you know, they see me coming, they'll go the opposite way and whatever else. They know I'm a preacher of righteousness. That's why. That's why so many people hate me on the internet. Because they know that I don't take it easy on sin, like so many others do. When God shows me something is wrong, he says, Okay, first of all, Brian, get it out of your life. Do justice and judgment in your own life. Okay, now you got it and you have victory over it. Okay, now you judge other people. 
judge those people and tell them, hey, this is wrong. Hey, that's bad. If I had a medical clinic here and somebody come in and, and I, you know, and they got a, a lunchbox with them or something, I'd say, open up your lunchbox. Open it up. I look in there. Okay. You got a sandwich that's made with white bread. You have, that's bad for you. You have uh, some kind of lunch meat. Did, is it got high fructose corn syrup? Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. That's not so good either. Um, and what do you have for, you know, little, little Debbie's for snacks or something? Um, again, corn syrup and sugar and whatever else. And they said, well, you're judging me, doctor. Yes, I am. Because you know what? I want you to be healthy. You came to me because you're sick. I used to eat a lot of junk food. I know what it's like. I know the feeling, the sugar high and then the crash and all that stuff. I know that what it's like to be sick for a long time and not be able to get over it. Get a common cold and you're sick for two or three weeks from it. I know what it's like. I don't even get colds anymore. And that's the truth. Why? Because I had to judge myself. I had to have God come along and say, hey, you need to quit eating this junk food. Hey, you need to quit doing that. Hey, you need to get away from the video games. Hey, you need to get away from the rock music. Hey, you need to get down through the list. We need to have judgment. Judge yourself first. That's the biblical method. Show me where I'm wrong, God. Show me what sins I need to get victory over. And then when I get victory over those sins, then help me to go out and judge other people on those same sins. You say everybody's going to be receptive to it? No. Verse 6. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Um, how judgmental. Calling uh, your people out there, enemies and things, call them swine. You bunch of filthy pigs. How judgmental. Um, that's what the Bible says. And we're supposed to not waste our time on people that don't want help. Judge them. You're wicked. You're going to hell. Okay. I have to walk away from you now. And uh, you say, well, that's just people that you meet out there on the street, you know, some screaming protesters or something. No, that sometimes is your family. Sometimes it's people that you love. Hey, uh, dad, mom, um, you need to be born again. What you're doing is wicked. You're watching television. You're going to some church building someplace. Listening, sitting under the ministry of a preacher that doesn't even believe in the Bible that he preaches from. It's wicked. And you're wicked for going. God's going to bring judgment on you. Well, I, I just, I, I, if you're going to talk this way to me, then get out of my home. Okay. I want to be right with God. So I need to leave. I need to break off fellowship with you. What? Family fighting and things. You're going to go through it. That's the way it is. See, brethren, we have to remember something. A lot of us forget. The Bible says, we'll go there. But I want you to see this. Second Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, two of my other uh, key life verses. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Are you a soldier? Are you at war with the world? How often do we forget that? We're not, there's no, no man's ground, you know, whatever the, the, the demilitarized zone or whatever you want to call it, some kind of a peaceful area that you can kind of hop into this, in between the two trenches, God's army and the lost. Here we are. We'll just kind of stand in the middle. Then you're going to have both sides shooting at you. There is no middle ground. You have to take a stand as a Christian. You have to say, I am against you lost world. And I will not stand for your wickedness. And I will not stand for your things that you're trying to do to me. Period. I'm going to judge you. I want to stand before God and this nation and say, God, this nation has gone past the point 
of, of any kind of return or whatever else. God, please judge this nation. Let's see if I can find the book real quickly here. Just kind of turn around and look for uh, what I saw up there. Um, not going to bother looking here real long for it, but the, my book from Robert Sheffy. Um, I don't see it right now. It's here somewhere on my bookshelf, but um, Robert Sheffy was a, Robert Sayers Sheffy was a Methodist, old time Methodist, not the modern stuff, back in the 19th century, 1800s. In other words, he was a circuit riding preacher and he would go around and he would preach to people out in the mountains and whatever else um, long before cars and everything and uh, electricity and whatnot. And uh, he told many a story where moonshiners would get mad at him and people would get angry because he was there judging them. But you know what the best time was for Robert Sheffy to witness? It's a hard saying, brethren. The best time for Robert Sayers, Sheffy, to witness the people was during the Civil War. And he said there were many times where he was there with the families when their dead loved one came home. Everybody was losing fathers, brothers, husbands, cousins. Civil War. America was torn apart. Why? Because God was judging the nation. Um. You say, well, I, I hope civil war doesn't come to this country. Well, I'm here to tell you, brethren, I hope it does. Um, whoever is the worst president for this country, I hope he gets elected. I hope God puts him in. I hope we have horrible times coming in the future. Why? Because it might break through the self-righteous pride of a lot of the people of this country. You say, what about you? What about, you, know, you might lose your wife. You might lose your son. You might lose your home. You might lose this. Uh, God will take care of me. God will take care of you. But what we need is we need a call to judgment, not only in our own lives, but please, God, judge this nation. This nation has gone too far. And a lot of people, the only way that they're going to think about Jesus Christ, the only way that they're going to get any respect at all for this Bible is if God brings harsh judgment into their lives. It's the only way. That's what's coming in the future. Again, like I said earlier, the greatest time period of salvation is going to be in the time of Jacob's trouble when God's wrath and fury is just being poured out and horror and terror is coming to the world like they've never experienced before. Great multitude gets saved. Should we want God's judgment on this nation? Yes. And I think that we should stop saying things like, oh, God, be merciful to this country. And I mean, yeah, I've said it, whatever else, but... We need to be mindful of what the scriptures say and that we should be calling for judgment. And uh, I mean, get get this God bless America stuff out of your speech. Let's make America great again. That That is blasphemy. It is blasphemy. So that's going to be it for this study, brethren. Um, you know, we, the temptation to live a good life down here on this earth and to just be at peace with fellow your fellow man and all this stuff. It is there. It is strong. You know, when you're a, a, a husband and a father like me, you men out there that have a wife and you have children and you love them very much. And you, you want your children to, to not ever have to experience the bad and the horrible and stuff that can happen when God judges a nation. Um, the temptation is there to kind of compromise the truth. But we can't do that. We have to pray that God's judgment hits this nation. Because if it doesn't, um, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to die in their sins and go to hell. Um, God's judgment hits. The chances to witness are going to be that much greater. Let's be open to those chances if they come. So let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that we have a perfect standard that we can use to judge people. And uh, Lord, I do pray that you would judge every one of the people out there that's watching this video. Judge me, Lord. Show me where I'm wrong and help me to break down my, my pride and admit to where my faults are. And Lord, help me to get through those things so that I can help other people get victory with their sins. And all of us out there as well, Lord, I pray that you would help all of us to stand by your word. And uh, I thank you, Lord, again for your word. I thank you for the fellowship that we have. And I, and I thank you, Lord, for the beautiful promise of the blessed hope that's coming in the future. 
And until then, Lord, I pray that you would help us to stand firm and not back down and to be judgmental. And I ask it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. That's going to be it. Let me unhook here again. Excuse me as I make things a little crooked. All right. <sighs> okay. Now's the time. Um, anybody have any thoughts? We'll start out this way. Anybody have any kind of thoughts? Um, you know, on uh, the study. Any extra thoughts, any other verses of scripture or whatever else? Um, we'll get to questions and answers, unrelated questions and answers here in a little bit. But uh, we can go a little bit past noon if we have to. Um, you know, I know some guy wrote a comment and he was saying about how I said in my last week's uh, live stream, the thing about evil beasts. And he said about, you know, we should never physically take up arms against police or, or military or whoever, politicians and things. Um, well, that should be our first desire. It really should be. But uh, you study church history, the Waldensian people. Ironically, this guy actually is, it was named James Waldenses. And the Waldensian people fought. They fought very hard against the Catholic persecution that was out there. Um, you know, I don't want to fight. None of us should want to fight, but that's part of being judgmental. We need to, to judge people and just simply say, hey, this is wrong. This vaccine thing is wrong. I mean, you know, use their own sources against them right there. CDC stuff. So. Um, it's a good question here. Um, there's a verse that says that we should not want or desire the day of the Lord. What does that mean? Yeah, I, I know which one you're talking about. Um, basically, it just means that, you know, woe to them that desire the day of the Lord. You know, it's a day of darkness and, and things. Um, people saying, oh, it'll be so nice to see Jesus when he comes back the second time. Um, when people, people don't understand how fearful it's going to be when Jesus Christ comes back. I mean, the, the most rich, powerful people in the world are going to be hiding underground and running into the caves and, and saying, to the to the rocks fall on us you know it's going to be a horrible thing when jesus christ comes back so people that are saying that they don't understand who jesus really is who his his righteousness what his righteousness is all about um they're not understanding it that's what it's talking about um Yeah, there's a good one. I, I, oops, excuse me. I missed that one. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I didn't mention that verse, but I was thinking about including it. Just didn't get around to it. Uh, he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Um, very good verse. Thank you for that. Um, absolutely. We are supposed to judge all things, um, but we're not. It doesn't mean that lost people won't judge you. They certainly will, but their judgment doesn't mean anything. Um, oh, look, YouTube uh, flagged my channel for hateful content or something. But what does that mean? I'm going to get up to heaven. The Lord's going to say, I saw that YouTube copyright strike. That was bad. <laughs> Their judgment means nothing if I'm standing by the word of God. Um, okay, I'll answer this one here. Steve, I can see yours. Question, have you heard of the Bruderhof? And if so, what are your thoughts? I have a video on it. Babylonian Bruderhof, it's called. Um, got a lot of hate for that one, too. <laughs> They're just another one of the monastic orders of, uh, you know, Amish type spinoff, you know, people. Um, they literally, the, the guy, the head of it, um, my picture that I have, the thumbnail picture that I have is him meeting with, uh, you know, Ratzinger, um, Joseph Ratzinger. You know, Benedict the Sixteenth, in other words, Pope. So they're they're just tied right in. I mean, literally, they had uh, Timothy Dolan, Cardinal Timothy Dolan of New York, 
uh, one of the most powerful Catholics in all of America. And he's there at the Babylonian or the, the uh, Bruder Hoff compound in New York. So Bruder Hoff are wicked. Um, question. I'm a widow and live by myself. I've been thinking of purchasing a weapon, but I'm not sure if that's pleasing the Lord. Okay. Um, Luke chapter 22, verse 36. Jesus Christ told his disciples to go out and buy a sword. And if they had a, a garment and no sword, sell your garment and buy a sword. So um, it's about defense. Okay, you're not going out. I'm not saying, hey, everybody, let's get weapons. Let's come up here to northern. Everybody come to northern Maine. We're going to form an army and we're going to start taking over states. and We're going to take this country back. That's not it. I'm not telling you to get a weapon and go out. And, and here's a list of people that we should shoot or whatever. It would be wicked if that was the case. Having a weapon to defend yourself is not wicked at all. Yep. Any other thoughts on the uh, sermon, on the issue of being judgmental? Then we can get into some of the questions and answers. You know, I, if I see some of your questions and they might have a sort of a judgmental tone to them, then I'll, you know, we'll get into it here, you know, say this question. When the, when the Bible talks about familiar spirits, what it exactly does familiar mean? Um, it means that uh, the devil understands a lot about you. He's the accuser of the brethren, the Bible says in Revelation 12. And so the familiar spirits, they're familiar with the kind of things that you struggle with. That's why if you're in any kind of ministry at all, um, on YouTube, you do any kind of videos or whatever else, the familiar spirits will tell these wicked people that watch your video exactly how to attack you. Um, they'll, they'll, they, they know how to get under your skin. That's what it means to be a familiar spirit. Um, question, does this apply? Read Matthew 23, 37, prophets judged, then read Matthew 23, 34. Okay. Go there quick. Matthew chapter 23, verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered my children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. And then the prophets are judged there. Okay, verse 34. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Yeah, the Lord sent them warning. Absolutely. You know, uh, just as he did back there in the Old Testament. The Lord says, I'm I'm going to go down to Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he sends two angels, you know. So, again, understanding the Lord uses us. The Lord saves you for a purpose. He sends you places on purpose. Acts chapter 8, Philip, ironically, brother Philip, you have Philip in the Bible. He sent down to meet with the Ethiopian eunuch. And I remember I literally I've told this story before, but I actually heard a uh, met a pastor from Africa. And I remember he preached this phenomenal sermon and I was about at a Baptist church years ago. I went to and um, churches or church buildings are wicked. But this guy, you know, good to hear him. And he and he was talking about the Gaza road. And he, I remember him saying, where is your Gaza road? And uh, and what is the thing that God has for you to do? In other words, where does God want to send you? And. Yeah. Uh, we should all pray for that. We should all pray and say, okay, Lord, send me in for judgment. Where do you want me to go? Do you want me to go into some store that needs to be judged and they yell at me and humiliate me and put me down because I don't have a face mask on and, and whatever else? Well, then that's God sending you there for judgment and God will judge that wicked store. See, again, that's part of the thing of judgment. Um, God, do you want us to do, should I make a video on this that can judge people? Should I, should I, you know, do whatever. I've seen that thing happen. Uh, OK, 
Okay. Why didn't Stephen defend himself? Acts chapter 7, I think it is. Um, yeah, Acts chapter 7. I'm trying to think here. Um, Stephen didn't defend himself because it was not the right context. Okay. He was there. Again, some a bunch of Catholics come outside here and whatever else, and I go out and I'm preaching and, and whatever, and they say, get him and kill him. Well, it's it's a different context. All right. It's it's something that is a spiritual, it's spiritual in nature. If I'm out preaching the gospel and somebody shoots me, well, okay. Um, if somebody's coming to to harm my wife and my son, that's a different situation. Yeah, by the way, look, uh, linking for the, this for those who seek fellowship, you can post message messages on the forums. Yeah, King James Video Ministries .org is a brother that runs that faithful brother in the Lord. And um, you can go over there and um, there's a lot of forums there. You can meet up with people and things. It's a great website. Highly recommend it. My website is King James Video Ministries .com. That website, King James Video Ministries .org, is another brother that runs that. So. But it's a great place to meet up with brethren and uh again carry on this chat thing over there uh any time of the week any any time of the night whatever um okay question how do you get out if you are young and have no experience no money and probably not saved yes you can pray for help but where will you sleep one month in advance um get out as far as get out of the city or something not quite understanding that um, problem you addressed in this study. As far as, you know, leaving relatives or whatever else. Um, as, as, as far as getting away from, from wicked situations, you just have to start praying about it. And the Lord will open up a door for you to get out of there um, is what I would say. Question, can a priest forgive sins? No, never. Sinners can't forgive other sinners unless it's a direct, you know, forgiving, forgiving faults, you know, between each other. That's fine. Um, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. But uh, forgiving sins, no. Priests don't have the, the power to do that. Um, um Okay, that's kind of a foul username there. Uh, I'll answer your question. Why won't Israel know that Jesus is their Messiah in this current period of time? Um, because blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Revel or Romans chapter 11 talks about that. Change your username. Uh, Question, is it wrong to read and listen to Christ attackers if it is for research purposes only? I've seen videos of you with Masonic books. Yeah, I have done stuff like that. I'm in ministry. Um, would I do that stuff if I'm not, uh, if I wasn't in ministry? No, I wouldn't. Um, you know, God calls certain men into ministry and that's just the way it is. But I don't, cert I certainly don't recommend my life like this to everybody else out there. Um, certainly not. Um, question, will there be lost people during the thousand years? Yeah, I do believe so. Um, yes, there will be, because the devil goes out and he deceives the nations and brings them to fight against Israel towards the end of it. Or not Israel, but towards the, you know, they fight against Jerusalem and the, you know, the city of the great king at that point. Um, uh, question, part one of two. When I preach against church buildings, I get people telling me that church building ministries are good because they're reaching out to foreign countries that haven't heard of Jesus. Um, and you need the, the bigger building and you need the, the huge finances and everything else to finance the missionaries. Well, um, how about if you get rid of the building and the salaried pastor and all the other stuff? You know, preachers can earn a living. I'm not saying 
that's wrong. But the salary thing and whatever is a problem. That's not really scriptural. That you get a set amount no matter what you do. Well, you should have the Lord providing. But um, get rid of that stuff and see how much money you have left over to support those missionaries. And again, where in the New Testament? That's the big issue. Where in the New Testament is anybody doing that? Having church buildings to send out other you know, to missionaries and whatever else. Um, okay, I guess I answered your question there. Is adding to the book of Revelation or subtract, subtracting unforgiving? In other words, will God forgive you for that? No, he will not. Their part is taken out of the book of life, what the Bible says. Um, is there perfect Bible translations in foreign languages? Sam Gipp teaches that the words of God, the word of God is in English only. Uh, I don't really know what Sam Gibbs stands are on that whole thing, but you, the, the answer to that is very simple. Um, God only used one language for the Old Testament, Hebrew. Um, basically used one language for the New Testament, Greek. Some say there's some Aramaic stuff there or whatever else, but um, basically he used one language for Old Testament, one language for New Testament. You say, therefore, he only uses one language for the completed Bible. Well, there's some issues there. Um because in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, God speaks through the disciples in other tongues. Uh, God certainly separated the tongues back in Genesis 9, or no, I think it's 11, um, the Tower of Babel. He goes down and he says the people are of one speech. So why would he have one language Bible, you know? I mean, the King James Bible was translated partly through the, the translators sitting there and, and reading foreign language translations and comparing it to the authorized version that they had just written. So I don't have a problem with foreign language translations, but you know, obviously if you get to Acts chapter eight, verse 37, and the, the foreign language translation takes it out, well, then they're following the Vatican type text um, and other things like that. So I don't have a problem with foreign language translations, uh, but you have to compare them with the King James and with others as well. Um, where did Abel go when he died? Abraham's bosom? Yeah. Died in the Old Testament. That's where he would have gone. Question. Do you have a video explaining Revelation's chronology? My, my big question is if the vitals are poured, vials are poured out during the tribulation well the, the tribulation is not really scriptural it's a time of jacob's trouble um so uh i would avoid um or i'm sorry i'm reading another comment uh i don't think i have one on the chronology of revelation so i don't really have that and you know the time of jacob's trouble yeah the vials were poured out during that time um this is what I was looking at. Is it okay if you uh, vaccine for tetanus? Uh, let me see if that's in here. I don't see it in here, at least not in the, yeah, it's not. I'd have to know what the name of the shot is, but I would definitely say no to that. Um, years ago, I cut my thumb really bad. This thumb right here, it's got a big old scar right right there something like that and uh maybe you can see it there and cut down into the bone severed some tendons and everything else really bad cut and i came into the hospital and they said you know um you know your your tetanus shot is out of date you know we looked up, up your records you haven't haven't had a tetanus shot in a while we have to give you a tetanus shot they gave me the tetanus shot because i didn't understand the whole vaccine thing at that point in time i was you know not very wise at that point and um i was sick for a couple days so lord only knows what they put into me with that stupid shot but um so i would avoid vaccines you know for any reason uh 
Uh, question, is it appropriate for a single woman to go to the store and judge the store or get into arguments with a bunch of men in the store who are the security? Don't seem to be able to do that. Um, no, I would avoid that. Again, you know, we're so disorganized, the body of Christ right now, trying to catch up here with uh, um, you know, I don't think it's, it's, I think right now women especially should be with a husband. If you're not married, then you should be with a, a saved man of some kind of friend or pastor or whatever else. And, you know, have that male authority there. Um, that's what I think about that. I'm not sure what to think about it. What do you think about Kim Clement and his Trump prophecy? No idea. I have no idea. I haven't heard of that. I'm trying to get down through here, and I, uh, and it's sometimes it kind of jumps up on me. So I'm sorry if I'm missing your question. Um, is it sin to love God's word more than Him? Is it possible? If so, what does a Christian stand towards God's word? Um, well, Psalm 138, verse two read that for you here really quickly psalm 138 verse 2 i will worship toward thy name thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth for thou hast magnified thy word above thine all thy name so god's word is is magnified above his name uh that doesn't mean that you worship the the bible you know obviously you can't touch god you can touch the bible um you can't write on god you can write in your bible um you can't memorize God. You can memorize your Bible. So it's not the same thing. Um, but if you would get kind of weird or whatever else and make some kind of a special stand for your Bible and bow down to it and offer up prayers to it, well, then you have a problem. Um, but the Bible needs to have the preeminent place in your life. Okay? But don't pray to it. Uh, do you have a video debunking the teaching of preterism? Well, any of my stuff that teaches the pre-trib rapture, the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble, would be a good way to debunk preterism. America deserves an EMP, but if Christians don't have weapons and protection and provisions, they will suffer too. Sure, but God can get them through it. Remember that. Okay, I'm trying to get down through these. Question, what are your opinions on David Hoffman? Is he good to learn from? I do know he uses he's using terms like Trinity and three persons, but he teaches body, soul, and spirit in one. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't have much to say on that. I know he's kind of attacked me a little bit. Some different brethren were, you know, have told me that. So where he lines up with the King James Bible, listen to him where he's, where he's off, then just forget it. Um, okay. Uh, what is EMP? I zip down here to the bottom. Um, electromagnetic pulse. If you can let, if you can, uh, set off a detonation above a bunch of electric type of stuff it shuts off it fries all the electric um does your wife make videos to help instruct younger women like titus too no no she doesn't that's right now my wife is transitioning away from helping me a lot with the ministry to now time to homeschool our son so she's not going to be doing a whole lot of um a lot of videos or anything else or even researching much anymore uh Question, I work for a construction company putting in fire optics. Should I quit my job? Well, if you're a woman working outside the home, then yes, I would say so. Um, question, if, is Saul in heaven if Samuel told him that he and his sons will be with Samuel tomorrow? Um, well, in the Old Testament, they would have gone to the same place as far as to the heart of the earth. They would have gone down there, saved to the uh, Abraham's bosom side, lost to being in hell. So you could make the you know, argument, because I've heard that argument. Um, you can make the argument that he's with them, technically, because he can see them over there. They're in Abraham's bosom, but he's in hell. 
So it's it's something that uh, you can say either way. Question. The man who asked about taking and adding from the Bible, what if that person didn't know better and God is teaching them and convicting them? Well, yeah. I mean, everybody's quoted scripture at some point in time and you don't quote it word for word. You mess it up or whatever else. Um, that's not what the scripture is talking about. It's talking about somebody that writes a whole new version, knowingly removing scriptures and calling it God's holy word. That's what it's talking about. Um Question, do you know that the king's daughter of Daniel 11, 6 actually is alive on earth now? She is called Aya El Sisi, the only daughter of the current Egyptian president. Figured it out. Huh. I haven't looked into that, brother. That's interesting. Question, I know you're, you've are you been careful in the past, but are there other preachers you can recommend? Um, listen to anybody that you read from a King James Bible. And God will show you very quickly. Oh, you know, oh, something's wrong here. You know, I mean, I I listen to a lot of guys that now I say are false. Um, uh, oh, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> didn't see that. I saw your wife's picture there. Um, as far as uh, no, I don't think that you'd have to quit a job because you're installing fiber optic cable. If there's some kind of a thing that's there, and you're you're saying, hey, you know what? Uh, this is wrong or something well you know the lord will direct you into that um so but as far as listening to other preachers i i listen to a lot of different guys over the years and and you just have to learn you have to go through it, this process of sanctification can someone be forced or tricked into taking the mark of the beast like young kids well i think a lot of the young kids are going to be leaving when the catching up happens so you know that's I don't, I don't really see it as a, a thing of, you know, I mean, I honestly, I don't know. I don't know in that time period, uh, you know, brand new babies, will they be marked? Will they have the chip put in them right away? What's the Lord going to do with that? I don't know. The book of Revelation is you know, written to the people in the time of Jacob's show. Uh, I'm a qualified Java developer. Should I make a billiards game for Android? No. I don't think so. That's my opinion. I mean, it's between you and the Lord, really, is what, what it comes down to. I'm not your holy priest or anything. I work in a school with special needs. I've prayed for a new job, but nothing is happening. Do you think God might want me there? Um, well, you need to just keep praying about it and say, Lord, where do you want me to go? I mean, sometimes the Lord will lead you out of a place slower. Um, sometimes it'll be just a boom, you're, law, you're, you're out of there, not lost. You're out of there, just boom like that. Depends. Question. I've talked to my mom about her chronic cussing. She then tells me that I'm disrespecting her when all I do is say that we're ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Any advice? Um, well, it sounds to me like she's probably lost. So I would start there and just simply say, do you know for sure that you're going to go to heaven when you die? And, and, you know, talk to her about certain scriptures and things and, uh, you know, show the scriptures too about, you know, Jesus Christ, there was no guile found in his mouth, you know, um, show her the scriptures on that. What do you think about the Abraham Accord signed this week? Well, I already talked about that. I said, it's not the, you know, in Daniel 9, 27 is a covenant that's confirmed. The Antichrist confirms it with many for one week. The Abraham Accord has nothing to do with that. There's no scripture saying that there's a peace treaty between the Jews and the Muslims. That's not there. Um, if a Christian is undermining my prayers and answers to them as well as me personally, are they trying to destroy my hope? First John 5, 15. How do I know if God is saying, no, wait? Huh. Let me look up the scripture quickly here. The more questions I answer, the more my brain starts to think, wait a sec. First John 5, 15. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Um, can a Christian 
undermine your prayers um, and things. Well, that is possible. Um, I don't really know the whole situation, so I can't really comment a whole lot on that. Um, is it wrong to listen to preachers who don't use the KJV if their main focus isn't about the Bible? I've been listening to some Christians debunking Islam that help me talk to some Muslims I know. But you're going to have a different source. You know, it's like a lot of this truth or stuff that comes out. They don't they're not saved. They don't have the Holy Spirit of God. They're they're going to lead you to wrong conclusions. So I would say no to that. Have you heard of the vision of George Washington? What do you make of it? Never heard of it. Question, I'm what you would call a hyper dispensationalist, where as I follow Paul's a pattern and I don't live under the but under the but under grace. You think hyper dispensationalists are saved or lost? Well, I would say um, either confused or lost. I've known saved people that get messed up in all kinds of different cults and whatever else. Um, if you're staying in it and if you don't have any problems and you end up fighting against the truth, then you're lost. Um, if you're just confused and messed up, the Lord will get you out of it. I'm trying to quit drinking of sodas. Any suggestions? Yeah. Um, get sugar out of your life. Uh, drink, you know, water. Good pure water. It's good. Um, again, it's going to happen over time. It isn't going to be just, oh, here's what you do, and boom, it, you flick a switch and it's over. You're going to, um, it's going to take some time to get away from that. Uh, Brian, thank you for all your work in the Lord. What is your advice to reaching out to family who lean heavily towards a works-based and door to the end salvation? Um, just simply, you know, the thing of if you died right now, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? Um, how much work do you have to do, you know, before you are assured of your salvation? You know. Question, is there a fine line or difference in calling out uh other on their wickedness while in a group or a gathering, meaning can that be also called gossiping because others are there? Um, if you're revealing personal secrets, then yes. If you're just saying, hey, you know what? Um, I think it's wrong for you to be wearing what you're wearing. I think it's wrong for you to promote that or whatever else. Um, no, that's not wrong. Question, based on the sermon, I feel I have failed the Lord at my job for not rebuking a lot of the wicked talk that goes on there. It is so vexing and nonstop every day. Why can't I be bold for God? Um, evil communications corrupt good matters. The more you're around it, the more it just, you know, if you're saved and you don't, I've noticed this, if you don't get in something for the Lord right away, lost people will, they'll initially come in very polite and things, but then they'll get, okay, he's not judging my sin. I can have more sin around this guy that's why it's good just to be totally zealous for the lord and radical for the lord um and you know just simply you know start talking about the lord and and um if you can listen to some hymns or or whatever else or try reading your bible or whatever um yeah by the way the thing of uh poison pop soda pop if you're trying to get away from it try herbal tea with honey instead of soda you will actually find that if you eat a good amount of honey, it's actually almost too sweet for you. Um, and it, yet it's good for you. It's kind of an interesting thing. Your body craves sugar and says, I want more sugar. But something that's actually sweeter, like honey, your body will say, oh, okay, that's enough. It's rather interesting. Do you believe it will be Islam that destroys Mystery Babylon? No. 
I don't. Um, I believe it's going to be a secular, you know, ten kings. Um, because the Vatican's going to raise, you know, rise up to such level of power. I think that they're going to wipe out Islam. I think that that's part of the war that the Antichrist goes forth conquering and to conquer. So they need somebody to, to fight against. Okay. Question, how would you respond to someone who says, God did his part for me on the cross, but now I have to do my part to complete my salvation? Say, okay, just go along with their, you know, answer the fool according to their folly. You simply say, all right, um, what is your part? How do you know it's complete? First John chapter 5, verse 13 says, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Do you know that you have eternal life? If not, why not? How many works do you have to do before you get, you know, attain eternal life? You know, the Bible teaches assurance of salvation. So, why does Genesis give us the names of the four rivers? No idea. The Lord has reasons for all that, you know, in the Bible. So, all right. Um yeah, in Romans, you know, the, the thing there to uh, AM, um, you know, Ephesians chapter 2 is a good chapter to go over the thing of not of works of righteousness, you know. So, um, All right. Okay, we'll finish with this one because it deals with judgment, kind of in with the sermon, a good way to finish it. Why do you think so many Christians have been fooled by President Trump? Because they want to believe the lies. They want to believe that he's going to make America great again. They're trying to hold off God's judgment on this nation. That's why. You listen to Donald Trump, he will tell you what you want to hear. We can bring things back and whatever else. So that's why people are falling for it. All right, that's going to be it for this week. We'll uh, end it here. And um, be open to judgment, brethren. Not only yourself, not only have God judge you and straighten you out where you need to be straightened out, but just say, okay, Lord, in my job, in my life, in my walk, help me to judge. Um, give me the strength. Help me not to be a coward. Help me to, to judge things. And if you want me to be... If you want me to, to go into a store and, and have them yell at me or whatever else, um, or uh, whatever, just, Lord, send me out there for judgment. Um, and God, judge this nation. Judge this nation that I'm part of. And when the judgment, when your judgment hits, help me to be there to witness to people. So that's going to be it. Um, anybody out there that... Uh, uh, you know, you want to get into other fellowship and whatever else, please go to kingjamesvideoministries.org. Um, that's a real good place to meet up with other believers. And, um, you know, it's we have, many of us, what we have right now is the Internet. Uh, I don't know any Bible believers in the area. I knew a few and, and lost contact with them and whatever else. But, um, but yeah, go please go check out that website. It's, it's very important to go over there, and you can have great fellowship and things. It's a lot better place than here on YouTube with all the swine that circulate around. <laughs> um, so, um, but that's going to be it, and we'll see everybody next week. Not sure what it's going to be about next week yet. Be what the Lord shows to me, but I have a few big things that I'm going to be. I'm doing research right now. Going to be coming out with, um, so. But that's about it. So thank you to everybody out there. Had a good time of fellowship. 
And uh, just keep in mind what the Bible says. So we'll see everybody next week.